The 528th edition of the MMA Gambling Podcast on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network is brought to you by Cut. Cut is a peer-to-peer social betting platform that's U.S.-based and available in 40 states. Head on over to Cut.com, that's K-U-T-T.com, and use promo code SGPN for a 10% deposit bonus. We're also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Play their fantasy pick for a chance to win 100 times your entry in NBA, NHL, college basketball, and more. Sign up today using promo code SGPN to get a 100% deposit match. We're also brought to you by SGPN's subscribers-only March Madness Bankroll Challenge, free to enter, and up to $2,000 in prizes. Enter today at sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash madness. And finally, we're brought to you by Hall of Fame Bets, the sports betting research platform for parlays, player props, and game lines. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit hofbets.com and use promo code SGPN to get 50% off your first month and start making smarter bets today. Howdy ho, DeGenerinos, and welcome to the MMA Gambling Podcast and the Sports Gambling Podcast Network, episode 528. It's going out to one of our friends in the YouTube, Iron Faya. Not only is it a fun name to say, Faya, but uh, he had nice, he thanked us for ripping off our regional episodes. So if you haven't watched or listened already, we got LFA and Octagon that we dropped for you on Monday and Tuesday. And that's where Gumby really makes the big money. He, he does the UFC because, you know, you casuals want the UFC, but the real money is made uh, on the uh, on the uh, amateur, not amateur, regional scene. Um, we're gonna this this card. No, I was gonna say this this card could be a regional card, but no, it's a bit better <laughs> than the regional card. It's, it's got better. a former champ in the main event. So, um, but we're gonna break down UFC fight night. He boss versus Na- Nami Yunus. Yesterday we did the seven uh, prelim fights. Gummy and I disagreed on a couple, so make sure you get in on there and listen. Maybe we have a surprising pick like that. They picked that guy. Um, so make sure you listen to that if you haven't There's already and watch like it. There's at least one like that. There's one like that. At least one like that. And make sure you subscribe <laughs> to our YouTube. Um, so yeah, we got six fights here. Let's bring in Gumby Vreeland. I think he's talking already, so I think he's ready to get sticky. Are you ready to get sticky with us? <laughs> this is another. I want to get. Uh, I, I want to bring. Ry, we're going to say Theo Rylang again in this episode. Theo, no, we here you got an I, episode. I'm pretty sure I'm just going to say Theo Rylang in every single episode until people start. Uh, Start subscribing me, faster to our YouTube. So if you want to, if you want me to stop saying Theo Rylang, uh, definitely go to the YouTube and subscribe. What's his nickname, Gumby? Theo, Theo Rylang. Rylang. Yeah. Uh, Do you the know Rhino, his nickname? Could it be the Rhino? <laughs> yeah, it would be a good one. The, it'd be better than the motor. Uh, Jungle King. The Jungle King. Hell yeah. yeah. Not the. Just <laughs> has Jungle he, King. Has he fought he, since he was on no. unceremoniously on Contender no. Series? <laughs> he just had a fight canceled. He was supposed to fight on Ultimate Battlegrounds 18 last Ultimate week, and he got canceled. Grounds? <laughs> Maybe you can have him. We don't really have guests on our show. Maybe you can have him on Top Turtle and find out what's up with this man. I'll, I'll, now, I'll check in on Theo. We're we're going to bring him uh, bring him out of obscurity and on here. So yet another Theo Rylang episode uh, is underway. Um, thoughts on the main card, Gumby? <laughs> I guess we've already given it thoughts. Yeah, I but mean, it's... It is what it is. A one card. <laughs> is it a one card lineup? No, I mean, like, uh, you know you know me. I dislike Cameron Simon quite a bit. You uh, sure do. But, but that fight is at least... You know, I, I always say fights should answer questions. Um, yes. And if if I don't feel like I need any answers about what Cameron Simon is at this point, which I, I kind of in that's that camp, this answers a ton of questions about whether or not Peyton Talbot is legitimately a prospect like people are hyping him up to be, or if he's Cameron Simon 2.0 uh, or maybe 0.2. How dare you? Uh, yeah, maybe he's Kirkland, uh, Cameron Simon. Uh, <laughs> I, for, like, I was supposed to name an episode that, and I forgot. I was supposed to name it Kirkland Carlston Harris, and I forgot. It's Kirkland a... Carlston Harris. Yeah. No, it's but Kirkland I made Neil you... Magny. Isn't it Kirkland Neil Magny? No, Carlston Harris. I, I said he's... Uh, I thought you I said Carlston hear... Harris is Kirkland Neil Magny. <sighs> <laughs> I might have said that, or any. Anyway, I, I said Kirkland, Jessica, and Josh. That for some reason really got you going. Oh yeah, that was um... that one really made you laugh. <laughs> it was, it yeah. was that little gal, the little tank. That Chelsea lost. Nunez, Chelsea Nunez. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excuse me. Okay, that's great. I burped. I, I sound like uh, I sound like talent on the hockey podcast burping on the on the mic. Hopefully, it wasn't uh, 
wasn't heard. I'm not going to um, edit it out, so it better no, better not. Yeah. Just so you know, not this episode in particular, but Gumby isn't perfect on ad reads either. Okay, just so all you people know, I've I've, I've stumbled on the other one the other day, and I just like compl- it. In. <laughs> complain about it before, like I butcher them, but Gumby, he's not perfect either. Right, just so you know. Um. So yeah, people were announcing uh, a while ago that it's Peyton Talbot fight week. So I guess we have some, at least weirdos in the Discord that are that are pumped for this fight. We got right? some Talbots. Oh, look at you. We do have uh, <laughs> sticky Talbot. We do have sticky bots, but do we have Talbots too? The sticky people aren't bots, though. That's like real people typing that, isn't it? Asking if you want to go I sticky. Know. I think they're bots. <laughs> <laughs> you think they're sticky bots? Maybe. maybe I we maybe we should DM more of them. <laughs> we should. We they should. Yeah, I haven't had uh, haven't had any spam DMs for a while. So um that used to be hi, how are you? You know, stuff like that. I'm like, okay, where's where is this headed? <laughs> No one asks anyone how they are anymore. What, where is this headed? It's got to be a trap. Um, all right. So we've got a fight card. <laughs> it, it, it's a fight card. I've already named an episode of that. This is so well, it was a fight card. But this one is going down Saturday. Seven is the prelims. Ten. T- yeah, ten is, is the main card. So they're going to squish seven fights in three hours. And then they'll they'll drag out the, the last six over uh, over four hour span. So um it's on ESPN. <laughs> this is on ESPN, Gabby. Remember, remember, remember when that was a thing? USC took pride in putting their best foot forward when yeah, the cards were on the big ESPN, but no. Now they're like, ah, it's March Madness. We don't care. We'll, we'll give you one fight. So that's fine. We're going to watch it. We're going to make money on it. Correct? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to watch it. You're going to, of course. Gumby Watch is tough, for crying out loud. Um, you'll definitely watch this. All right. Should we kick things off with a featherweight fight? Whether you like it or not, we're going to. Luis Payul, Payulo, Payulo. Is he one of our Peruvian up and comers? He is. Um, he is fighting Fernando Padilla. He is from from down in that part of the world as well, isn't he? He's from Mexico, not quite as far down uh, as Peru from where I am, but uh, still. Um, three, five hundred rounds, 145 pounds. I shall tell you about. Pahulo first. You know his nickname, Gumby. Pahulo? No, not off the yeah. top of my head. Corazon de Leon. Uh, Lionheart. Yes. Do you know whose nickname was that when Cor- Corazon de Leon, when he fought in Mexico, when he wrestled in Mexico in CMLL in his early days before he became a WWF superstar? Uh, is it Rey Mysterio Jr.? No, it is Chris Lionheart Jericho. Oh, Razon I did actually. I did, not yes. know, I did know that before he became the lead singer of Fozzie. <laughs> yes, and a, yeah, I, I won't go into everything else about him currently, but yes. Uh, oh, is it not Yulo. Good? I don't. No. I don't follow wrestling no. anymore. It's he's, not good. <laughs> he's uh, but he's been living in Florida for quite a while. It's okay. Do I need that's, to say more. Yeah, okay, no, that's fine. And he supports okay. certain people financially and stuff like that. He's just a. He's a. He's a guy. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. He's he's a Florida. He's Florida man. Actually, he's he's, he's very much Florida man now. Okay, looks like cool. one, acts like one. All right, cool. but not Pahulo. He's Peruvian man, which is actually a pretty good thing to be nowadays in MMA. Even though Peruvian uh, didn't win the title uh, a few weeks back, that they still seem to be on that's, the rise. That's, uh, that he's not Peruvian. <laughs> the guy there is of. not. You're right. No, uh, it's <laughs> Colombian. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah, Colombian. You're right. Or no, I Ecuadorian. Mean, oh man, I, I even oh I'm yeah, Ecuadorian. See? He's Ecuadorian. We're, we were, um, I covered myself though. You didn't such a scandal. <laughs> we're, we, we don't know our South American, uh, uh, geography as well as we should. All right. Payulo. I'm, I'm going to try to get through his, his, Actually get now. Through we'll this see. <laughs> okay. He's eight and one with seven knockouts. That's good. That's impressive. Regardless of what, whatever country he's from, that's impressive. He's never been finished any fight. So he owes us to be finished. I guess. I don't think I've said that one before. This is his debut. One no one contender series. He's won five straight fights, two straight via TKO. He's not lost since December of 2021. Used to fight at lightweight striking stats, and he's more active landing strikes. Both those are in his favor based off of one fight over Padilla. Uh, he outstruck his opponent on contender series by 4.04 strikes per minute. Who did he fight, Gumby? Do you remember that? Uh, Robbie Green. Were you impressed with Payulo coming off the show before we, yep. I, I continue? You yep. were. Okay. That's He doesn't want to show his hand yet. Plus 140. Padilla, El Valiante. Do you know that one? The it's valiant. Spanish. You should know it. Yes, the valiant, the brave, the brave versus the lionheart. Fifteen to five, five knockouts, eight submissions. Never been finished in a fight. One and one in the UFC. Three and one over his last four. He did lose his last fight. He's used fight at bantamweight. He's fight at lightweight. Three inches height, seven inches of reach. Oh, that's catnip to me. Uh, even though I don't track those stats anymore because uh, reach didn't uh, prove to be beneficial 
to winning fights. I'm sure it, it's case by case scenario, but overall, it, it did not uh, move the needle. Uh, he's two years younger than Payulo. He's got better grappling stats. He's been outstruck in the UFC by 0.3 strikes per minute, minus 165. I think I'm going to differ than you here. I usually start off the main card. I'm taking Padilla. I have a feeling you're not going to take him. Uh, you're right. He's more well, more well rounded, obviously, way bigger, uh, way better resume. Uh, Payulo. Um, not the greatest uh, resume before the contender series. Um, give me the chalk here because I'm Jeff Chalks after all. I'm not sure it's a better resume uh, than okay. Paolo. Uh, but you know, Paolo beat up. Robbie I said Pena. it better than you, you know, though. If you, if, if you want to go back and look at what Fernando Padilla did before he made it to the UFC, he fought Nate Richardson to a split decision because he anybody he doesn't knock out, he doesn't look particularly good against. Oh, that's where you headed um, with this. Yeah, and like I, I think if you can't knock a guy out. In, in I mean, like the, the last three fights, he didn't knock the guy out, right? It, so yeah. in his last five fights, he's got two wins by knockout. He lost to Kyle Nelson by Kyle Nelson just turning up the pressure and giving him more action. He lost to Spike Carlisle, who was about a foot shorter than he was. And he, he, he Belter legend, a, Spike Carlisle. Yeah. Well, UFC legend too. He was in UFC yes. for a hot minute. I know. Um, and, and then he he drew with, or took a split decision over Nate Williams, who's not. You know, he's like a just a regional guy. Um, so like for me, Padilla does not look too well against nobody as somebody he can't knock out. And the thing about Pauelo is, is he's got incredible uh durability and he's got a great gas tank and he pushes forward. I mean, he's pretty much like the featherweight version of Kevin Borjas, uh, another guy who I really like out of Peru and has looked, you know, with the exception of you know, not having the same cardio as Joshua Van, which like, by the way, who does? Uh, <laughs> um, I do. You know, Kevin Bor- <laughs> Kevin Boras looked pretty damn good too. And I think Paolo can mimic that. The, the pace and the beating he put on Robbie Ring was just incredible. So I think he just gets in Fernando Padilla's face and forces him into a really ugly fight. You forgot about uh, when you're naming all the attributes, the physical attributes, you forgot about the most important one about Pahula. Pahulo. He has a lion heart. Oh, Isn't yeah, yeah. Good? I Isn't mean, that that's actually nickname? that's actually a fitting nickname for him versus like yeah. uh, Anthony well, was. It was fitting for Anthony Smith at one point in time in his career. Yeah, it's what just happened like, to that guy? As he an got aside, hit in the head a really him. lot of times. He's yeah. fought like 50 times in his career. Is, is, is that what's happening here? Yeah, I think a he's lot just of, or, or, or down, just, does he just have a mic in front of him all the time now? Well, and now they're putting up against guys like Vitor Petrino and stuff like that, too. Like, they, I mean, like. He feels like a sacrificial lamb every time he goes yeah. out there. <laughs> glue factory. They're sending him off to the glue factory, apparently. Um, yeah. But yeah. He's, Anthony, he's Anthony said, Smith's glue factory. There's, Henry, your, oh, there's our title. It was going to be another uh, <laughs> Theo Rylang, but Gumby comes through with another one. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, anyhow, it's strange. Um, Anthony Smith's glue factory. It is. It's written down. I'm not going to forget it now. Okay. I'm going to tell you about some more of our friends that are keeping us in your eyes and ears. We're brought to you by us. Oh, I'll probably have this posted in time for you to get in on our merch madness sale. I think the sale only goes till the tip off of March madness, but the bosses are usually kind with these things and they extend it. So merch madness, 15% off everything in the merch store of the sports gambling podcast.com slash store promo code madness. You can get SGPN gear. You can get MMA gambling podcast gear. We got lots of cool gear in there. Gumby's designed a bunch of cool shirts um, in there, or he's, he's helped design. He, he's been the brains behind it at the very least. So get in there, get some merch, Walk around looking cool like Gumby and I, because uh, I think we've proven over 528 episodes that we're super cool guys and you want to be like us. All right. Uh, you also want to get in the SGPN subscriber only March Madness contest, assuming this gets in your ears and or eyes in time. The contest is free to enter and open only open, excuse me, to subscribers of SGPN shows. For every SGPN show you're subscribed to, you get bonus credits used in the contest. It's bankroll style contest and winner take all. For a thousand dollar prize or two thousand bucks, if you're subscribed to Sports Gambling Podcast Patreon, I think you're going to make money there. I don't think Patreon costs a thousand bucks, so boom. Uh, go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash madness. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash madness. Unless you're hearing or seeing this too late, in which case, just ignore everything I just said. A uh, cut is peer to peer social betting platform that's US based and available in 40 states. Peer to peer social betting is a new and better way to bet, bet directly against your friends or other users in sports, politics, pop culture, and other events with verifiable outcomes, and they have tons of social fun social features. They give it the feel of a betting social network. Cut offers lower big and fully customized, customizable. It's become a, a thing for me, that word. Odds, create your own bets. Cut handles the payment side of things so you never have to chase anyone down for money. 
Social features include group chats, betting leaderboards, head to head history, user profiles, group fan groups, and more. And the rewards are you get your cash back every single time you bet against your friends or other users. Get on there, check out the the custom bets that the SGPN crew have put on there. Download Cut today in the App Store or over at cut.com. That's K U T T dot com and use promo code SGPN for 10% deposit bonus. And I give you one more thing you can get discounts from. Thanks to us. That would be Underdog Fantasy. They are the fastest and not fastest. They're easiest. It's close to fastest, easiest place to play fantasy sports. It's also the fastest growing fantasy app in the industry. I knew I was going to say fastest eventually. Uh, it's basically a pick em game. You pick higher or lower on stat totals for two to five players, any sport you want. And yes, there is MMA on there. Um, and if you hit everything correctly, if you're smart, if you listen to Gumby and chalks and you play your cards right you can win a hundred times your money in a single night sign up today with promo code mma sgpn and get your first deposit double it up to 100 bucks as well as an instant pick them special visit or find them in the app store and don't forget to register with our promo code mma sgpn to get your first deposit doubled up to 100 bucks as well as an instant pick them special you must be 18 or older and present in the state where underdog fantasy operates terms apply if you're with your play call 1-800-522-4700 or ncpgambling.org is where you can visit. All right. Drink time again. Same water from yesterday somehow, Gumby. Same cup, same same glass of water. I've been milking it since yesterday's episode. Still. All right. What are we going to now, Gumby? I should be more excited about that. Where are we off to now? We're going to stick with the featherweight weight class. Billy Quarantilo, Yusuf Zalal. It's actually a pretty good fight. It shouldn't be, I shouldn't be down on this one. So we got America. Versus Morocco. The Moroccan fighter would be Z- Zalal. He's making his UFC return here. He's the Moroccan devil, if uh, that doesn't give away where he's from. Uh, he's 13-5-1, four knockouts, six submissions, so he's pretty deadly. He's never been finished himself, so um, Yanni is picking him to get finished here for sure. This is short notice re-debut. Not a short notice debut, but a re-debut. He went 3-3-1 and one in the UFC, his first go-around. Since then, he's won three straight fights, all via finish. So that will get you an invite back to the big dance. Um, has not lost since June of 2021. He's fight down at Bantamweight, up at Lightweight. Two inches of reach on Quarantilo, eight years younger. He outstruck his UFC opponents by one strike per minute, so striking wasn't really the issue. Uh, his first go round, he's at plus 120. Billy Quarantilo, you can call him Billy Q. That's not an official name. I'm just calling him that. He's 18-5, and five, eight knockouts, five submissions. He's been knocked out twice. He's a pretty durable dude as well. Six and three in the UFC. Loss, win, loss, win, loss, win over his last six. One known contender series, one and one in the Ultimate Fighter. Multiple reaching championships on his mantle. Correct. Get the shirt. Sportsgamepodcast.com slash store. Madness is your code. Uh, used to fight at lightweight 2013 pro on May debut. One knows pro boxer. Almost three times more active landing strikes than Zalal is. Uh, he's outstruck his UFC opponents by 2.10 strikes per minute. He's at minus 130. All right, Gumby. Go ahead. You know, if if this wasn't such a short notice fight for Yusuf Zalal, I might give him a little bit more of a chance here. Yep. Um, because he has shown like he's got like a little bit of grappling in here, mm-hmm. and he is a factory X guy. And I feel like if he had gone through with a full fight camp to get ready for Billy Quarantillo, he might just be the guy. But because he's not, I'm gonna lean with Billy Quarantillo here. I, I know that Billy Quarantillo dealt with the wrestling of Damon Jackson enough in his last fight. Um and granted, like he got taken down sometimes, but he like most for the most part popped right back up and and looked all right doing so. So the fact that Billy Q sort of dealt with that kind of grappling, I think he's good enough to deal with Zalal's, especially short notice Zalal. I think he's going to be a little faster, a little sharper on the feet. So yeah, I'm going to take Billy Q here. As am I. You got to fade these, these short notice guys, Sally. So um, you didn't fade Billy the other Cor- one. I know it's true. It's true. <laughs> but I, I think the uh, Quarantilo is, is a better fighter too. So there you go. Gumby has taken, he faded both short notice people. Wow. You're, you're paying attention. Finally. Are you good job? Just All right, here we go. Gumby. Give up. Just in time for me to give up on the stat. It's true. Here we go. The big fight, uh, the people's main event uh, should be good. It, it should be a good fight. Good fight with lots of fouls. Uh, Banner weights, three or five minute rounds, Peyton Talbot, Cameron, Simon, um usa versus south africa i already forget remember we figured out what uh, or i found what msp means uh in south african do you remember what i told you it meant because i don't no, remember somebody, somebody i think told us and then we forgot yeah <laughs> we shout out us again yeah. same person <laughs> exactly who told us uh all right simon nine and one six knockouts one submission he's never been finished in a fight three and one in the ufc he did lose his last fight who do you lose to gumby uh c-rod right 
C Rod is true. Yes, it can. Uh, so it's it's kind of aged pretty good. And Christian Rodriguez, uh, one known contender series was regional champion two years younger than Talbot. Better grappling stats than Talbot. Uh, he's outstruck his UFC opponents by and contender series opponents by two point zero four strikes per minute. He's at plus one twenty five. Talbot seven zero five knockouts one submission. He's one known the UFC. Won his uh, lat, that fight uh, by submission. One known contender series was regional champion two inches height three inches of reach over Simon. Better striking stats. He's more active when he strikes. He's outstruck his contender series and UFC opponents by 3.54 strikes per minute. Minus 145. Is it me? It is me. Oh, boy. I'm taking Talbot. Sorry to disappoint you, Gumby. Uh, I'm impressed with Peyton no, Talbot. And he's, none. You, you try to bully me into, into liking Cameron Simon, but no. Uh, I did Simon. literally the opposite of that. I was I literally <laughs> you were trying, to, talk trying me out to get of it. you to confront <laughs> the idea that you keep talking about him like he's good. No. Despite the fact his results are good. Yes. And his performances are not the same thing. Maybe it's uh, catching up to him though, because his results were not good last fight, and I just Talbot's impressive. He's been very yeah. impressive. So, and, and I and I think this is the same kind of matchup. Granted, a step probably a step behind C Rod, but uh, the question here is obviously, can Simon hold down Peyton Talbot long enough to win some kind of decision? Because I don't think anybody's under the assumption that Cameron Simon can outstrike him. Like this was a pick him like three days ago, and now the money is all coming on Talbot. He's up to being a what'd you say, negative one forty five favorite. Yeah, you know, if you're getting in on him now, you're kind of you kind of miss the horse uh, on this one. And, and I think. I think negative 145 is probably a more correct line. Like I think Talbot has that much of an advantage when it comes to striking. And we saw some really great scrambling out of him, right? He did that weird flip to get out of a takedown. Um, mm -hmm. That guy grabbed his leg and he did a backflip and then just was not in a takedown anymore. And Cameron Simon <laughs> is like had a little bit of trouble dealing with people who scramble well. Right. And that, that is mm -hmm. ultimately what cost him against C-Rod. Um, so like, yeah, I, I think Peyton Talbot uh, is, going to do enough scrambling to get back to his feet and when he's on the feet he should just pepper uh simon this would not surprise me if this is one of those fights where uh you know th there's a lot of control time or plenty of control time for simon and it just doesn't matter and the judges know that talbot's doing all the damage what if simon cheats really really hard what yeah, I mean, he could kick hardest. him in the balls seven times and get. Uh, <laughs> then her will probably come with uh, the the hardest. This is a of firm order, the, warning. The double secret ultra final uh, <laughs> probation true. warning. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. It's true. Um, all right, you're not disappointed. You're happy I'm off this Simon train. Yes. What well, depends, yes, depends who he's fighting. I've literally Actually. tried to get you to jump off that train <laughs> since he entered the UFC. And you're well, like, I don't know. He's much better. I went three and one picking ever. him, didn't I? <laughs> went three and one picking him. So I did all right on that train. But yeah, I'm, I'm pretty I'm sure I went um, one and three picking against. No, yeah. I did pick him against uh, the dude from Alaska. Um, I'm not going to remember his name. Terrence, uh, Jerry Terrence Cannonier. Mitchell. Terrence Mitchell. Not Jared Cannonier. He fought T Terrence Mitchell. He fought Terrence Mitchell, right? <laughs> you don't like my joke? Him fighting I, Jared no. Cannonier would be he amazing. Jared Cannonier. <laughs> Did you know Jared Cannonier's 40? <laughs> yeah, but he's got those crystals. That's why he doesn't look 40. <laughs> it's fair. Fair. It's true. <laughs> Jared Cannonier's crystals, or would you rather have uh, Anthony Smith's glue factory? <laughs> uh, the glue factory is a better line. So okay. uh, I would rather have neither of them, uh, to tell you the <laughs> truth. One thing I would like to have is uh game time app which i do have it's not hard to get anyone can get it and they should because game time is the place for last minute ticket deals i'm on there all the time checking out deals for stuff because they got everything there you can get plenty months in advance game time is deals and tickets right up to the day of the event get exclusive exclusive that's not a word exclusive is low exclusive flash deals on tickets for football basketball baseball concerts comedy theater mma and more the game time guarantee means you always get the best price Find tickets in the same section and row for less. Game time will credit you 110% of the difference. By my math, that means you make 10%. So that's pretty dang good. Snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code CFBX for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account. Redeem code CFBX for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right. Let's get some more guaranteed winners here, shall we? We're going up, up, up to middleweights. Eben Shabazian. I don't want the pop-up ad to come up here. Let's get rid of that. Eben Shabazian versus AJ Dobson. Three, five hundred rounds at middleweight, like I said. Dobson, seven and two with one no contest, two knockouts, three submissions. He's kind of taking this a short notice, not official by my records because he's gotten more than a month notice, but it's going to be a shortened, uh, shortened fight camp. We'll, we'll say that. Uh, 
as have I did I say Dobson's never been finished? It's true. Time for him to get finished. One and two in the UFC, one and two over his last three. He did win his last fight, though. Probably saved his UFC career with that. One known contender series, used to fight at welterweight. An inch of reach on Shabazian. More active landing strikes in him. He's been outstruck in the UFC and contender series by 0.87 strikes per minute. He's at plus 170. Shabazian, the golden boy. He's still going with that nickname. Uh Going until the wheels fall off. Uh, 12 and 4 in the UFC, 10 knockouts, one submission. He's been knocked out three times, 5 and 4 in the UFC, 1 and 4 over his last five. Got TK out in his last fight. One known contender series, an inch of height, five years younger than Dobson. He's been outstruck in the UFC by 0.67 strikes per minute, minus 190. Mr. Gumby. I don't really love this line. In fact, it might be one of my least no. favorite lines in the whole thing, but I still got to go with Edmund Shabazian. Like, I, and I know that. Uh, I don't I know that he's won one of one of his last five fights. Yeah. Uh, but like when you look at that resume, man, it is just yeah. like, you know, like, can you fault him for losing to Nasoradina Mava for Anthony Hernandez or Derek Brunson or what was the other one? Jack Hermanson. Hermanson. Yep. Yeah. That's, that's like a hell of a run there. And, and like he's competitive in a lot of those fights too, especially the the Anthony Hernandez one, which it turns out aged incredibly well because uh, mm-hmm. Hernandez looked like a world beater against Kabilov. So, you know, I, I kind of am of the belief that Edmund Shabazian, we, we said when he went up to Extreme Couture, he kind of changed himself around that fight with, um, now he's the one who fought Dachi Lugiambula, right? And yes. Dotson's yep. the one who Beat fought Tefan Chukwi. Um because they're yeah, he, generally he both out, like the super out. muscly middleweights, and I kind of yep. get him. Yeah, okay. So he's the one who beat Dolce. And so, like that that fight, it was like, oh, okay, this is old Edmund Shabazian. This is prospect Edmund Shabazi again. And then when he fought uh, you know, Hernandez, I think a lot of people were like, Oh, maybe he's not as good. And I think it's just like, uh, oh, it was a tough big step up, man. Yeah. And AG Dobson is a colossal step down from where mm-hmm. uh, Anthony Hernandez is. So I think Shabazian we see with like a little bit better of a blend of striking, you know, certainly staying away from the wrestling at Dobson and, and probably putting it on him here. So, yeah, I'll take Shabazian. Uh, not not crazy about the negative 190 because this is a complete, you know, like we haven't seen him against somebody who's like a middling middleweight, right? We've seen him against Dolce yeah. Lugiambulu, who's not with the company anymore, or a guy who's legitimately probably a top 10 middleweight. Those are the two different things we've seen him against in the last five years. Yep. It be true. Um, I'm taking him as well. Yeah, I don't think I said that, but yes, Shabazian is the pick. But as you said, the number, eh, you don't really want to uh, lay that much on um, on the Edmund Shabazian fight at this point. So uh, let's go to the co-main event. As Gumby said, fight cards are defined by the co-main event. Carl Williams versus Justin Toffa. I keep bringing that yeah. up. It's, it's funny. <laughs> it's funny in this card. And pretty much it's true as well. Um, three, five minute rounds at 265 pounds. Assuming Toffa gets down to 265. Um, tell you about Toffa first. He's bad man. Does his brother have a nickname? I can't remember. Junior? Does he have a nickname? Yeah, Junior Toffa. The Junior okay. is a pretty fair nickname. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. All right. This Toffa is seven and three with one no contest. Seven knockouts. He's been knocked out once. Four and three with one no contest in the UFC. Three and oh with one no contest over his last four. He got a knockout in his last fight. He's taking this to short notice for his brother. His brother took a fight uh, about a month or so ago on short notice on his behalf. Uh, he's missed weight. He missed weight at heavyweight. It be true. Uh, regional champion. He's been outstruck in the UFC by 0.8 strikes per minute, but it doesn't matter when you hit like he hits. Um, 25 pounds heavier than Williams based on their last weigh-ins. He's three years younger. Don't need to weigh in for that. Uh, more active landing strikes than Williams, plus 160. Williams, 9-1 and one with three knockouts. He's been submitted one time. 2-0 and all in the UFC, 1-0 no on the Contender Series. Six straight wins for him. He's not lost since December 2021. Used to fight at light heavyweight. 0-1 PFL, three inches of height, five inches of reach over Taffa. Better grappling stats than Taffa, and he's outstruck his UFC opponents by 1.13 strikes per minute, minus 190. Going against, my, uh, going against the stats again, Taffa is the pick. I don't care if it's short notice. He's just, he's a better fighter than Carl Williams. And he's, well, maybe he's not a better fighter. He's way more dangerous than Carl Williams. Carl Williams isn't, isn't very good either, which, which helps. Um, bad man's getting the win here. Yeah. I'm going to go with Tafa too. I, I think the biggest piece for me in picking Tafa is just that, like, 
I've said this before. Carl Williams really is a light heavyweight. I, I don't know why they insist on keep sticking guys who seem like they could make light heavyweight and could get themselves into a little bit better shape and make it down to light heavyweight. They insist on like forcing them up to heavyweight to like fill out these divisions. Cause really, like I said it about Jelton Almeida, Jelton Almeida, while he might be good enough to be heavyweight champ could also probably be light heavyweight champ. And then they're mm-hmm. like forcing Jamal Pogues up and they're for- forcing Carl Williams up. And like a lot of these guys should just like, you know, hit the training regimen hard and get down to 205. Cause I really think that that's where they would flourish because Carl Williams, I mean, let's face it. Most of his good fights or most of the, the fights he's won, I guess none of them particularly looked all that good. <laughs> nope. We're like, you know, him dragging down Lucas Brezhki like a hundred times and just like putting him into deep water with like takedown after takedown after takedown after takedown. And like when he starts to fight these guys like Justin Taffa, I think he's going to have trouble with that. Now, Junior Taffa obviously has trouble with the takedowns. We saw it in his last fight. Justin is a touch better, which I think probably is the the calculus of this fight that, that you have to decide. Like is Justin Taffa enough better than his brother in terms of defending takedowns? I also think he's just like a little bit more nuanced in the feet. Also, I'm being told by the intern, Junior Taffa is his first name. Uh, he also ah. goes by the Juggernaut. Uh, Junior's a weird name. Oh, right. Uh, yeah, we talked about the Juggernaut. This yeah, right. the Juggernaut. The Juggernaut. No, so, we uh, talked about a different Juggernaut. That, that was a, uh, a gal we were talking about who's on the regional scene, the, the Juggernaut as well. But yes. Are you thinking of the Sluggernaut? Oh, no. I thought we had we had a Juggernaut. On, on <laughs> we our, talked about the Sluggernaut, too. I know we did talk about the Sluggernaut as well. All right. <laughs> I, I think I still have it here. Uh, the Juggernaut is... Someone named, oh yeah, Austin, who's fighting Wojcik on uh, Octagon. Oh, Jacinta Austin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I forgot she, she was the juggernaut. That's a weird one. Yes. Um, don't forget Anyway, it. anyway, Justin Taffa knocks out Carl Williams. There you go. <laughs> oh, there you go. There's your prop. Yeah. I mean, do you, do, you want Justin Fa- do you want Justin Taffa in a f- three-round decision? <laughs> yeah, Justin Taffa via decision. It's true. Um, all right. Should we get to the main event? We should. Um, it is women's flyweight. Right when I was saying, I'm glad Amanda Hebos is back at strawweight. She's back to <laughs> flyweight again here. Amanda Hebos versus Rose Nama Yunus. Five, five minute rounds. Women's flyweight. Hebos is ranked higher, I guess, because the uh, her name's coming first here, surprisingly. Um, she's not ranked higher on the on the board, though. Uh, she's 13 and four. Hebos is four knockouts, four submissions. She's been knocked out three times. Seven and three in the UFC, lost win, lost win, lost win over her last six. She won her last five VTKO. Used to fight at straw weight. Multi region championships on her mantle. Correct. Get the shirt, slash store. 2014 Pro on May debut, an inch of reach over Nama Yunus, a year younger, plus 200. It's come down a bit. It was a bit higher before. It's more like plus 250 range. Uh, Fug Rose Nama Yunus, 11 and six, two knockouts, five submissions, knocked out once, submitted once. Nine and five in the UFC. She's lost two straight. Before that, she won three straight. She's not won since November 2021. Used to fight at strawweight. Was a champion two times at that weight class. Three and all in the ultimate fighter. Uh, won her season. That's what won her. No, she didn't win her season. She lost a, a Sparza. Um, 2013 pro MMA debut for Nami Yunus. Old one is a pro grappler. Two inches taller than Hibas. Minus 210. Finally, Nami Yunus is fighting someone who is younger than her. Um, Rose has finally grown up. All right, you get to finish things off. I'm going to take Rose Nama Yunus. I'm glad that number came down a little bit on her. Uh, mm-hmm. Again, maybe... No, I don't know. I, I think now that it's at negative 210, I, I think I am fine with that number. Because here's the bottom line here, is that Amanda Hibas has kind of shown that when somebody can stay out of her her close proximity in fighter at range, they really can do a number on her, right? Like, I'm thinking back to the Marina Hotiguez fight, right? Marina Hotiguez just absolutely torched her on the feet and like rose lama Yunus, when she's at her best is that version of herself um and then like best case scenario we're talking about amanda hebos if you are a amanda hebos fan is like she's gonna bull rush her and get her into a whole bunch of clinches and stuff like that and try to drag her to the ground and rose lama Yunus just happens to have moved this camp through fighting with greg nelson up in uh what is it i, I can't remember the name minnesota combat sports okay um, yeah yeah, he's, he's Brock Lesnar's old coach. He's John yeah. Castaneda's coach. And like, so she just happened to move camp up to a place where it's going to like help her with the wrestling. And and while I know she didn't look, you know, she didn't look like a world beater. She didn't look like a potential champion at flyweight against Manon Firo. She didn't hold her own with Manon Firo on the feet, right? Like almost an entirely in a fight on the feet. It was like a back and forth fight. Uh, and I think that alone should make you say like, she's still really got striking chomps. 
And I don't know that Heboss can get inside, and I don't know that she can bully her up at featherweight because I'm sure Rose is doing a better job at like bulking up and because because Rose is just committed to moving up at this point, right? Like she's not. Going yeah, back I saw 15. a headline saying she's not going back. Yeah, yeah, and and, and Heboss seems like she's like kind of on this fin, so like maybe she's not bulking up, or maybe she's not hitting a nutritionalist to to gain that weight. So for me, the commitment to 125 and Rose is probably doing it right, getting a little bit bigger, working with a coach that's good with wrestling so that she can implement her striking more at this weight class. I, I just think those all spell disaster for a Hebos. So I, I'm going to take Rose Nami Yunus here. Despite all that, I'm taking Hebos. Um, I like like the line in her. I like getting two times the money. I, I don't trust Rose Nami Yunus at this point. But like you said, new, new fight camp could change things for her. Um, I don't know. I, I might just be picking it because I, I like Hebos as a fighter. But um, but I'll be honest uh, honest with it by saying that. But um, I'll take Hebos here and hope she doesn't get bullied. And hope I. I hope um, the bad Rose shows up because you never know you, what Rose you're going to get, which is another thing I don't want to lay minus 210 or whatever on Rose Nami Yunus because you never know. She might decide she's not going to fight this fight and think she's doing good and think she's getting points for playing defense. That's definitely possible. I, can I ask you <laughs> a favor? Thing. If you're going to pick Amanda Hebos, can you at least give us your best hello? Hello. <laughs> I, haven't heard her, I haven't heard her for a while. Did you still do that? I don't know, but that's the only thing I think of when I see her face. Yep. It's like that plays yep. on repeat in my ear. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. All right, let's repeat. Let's repeat our picks, shall we? He boss, Namayun. I have Ebos, he has Namayunus. We both have Tafa. We both have Shabazian. I have to put your name down or Shabazian. Um, we both have Talbot. Obviously, Dan is not taking Simon. Both have Quarantilo. I have Padilla. He has Pahulo. So we started and ended with a different pick. So there you go. All right. Before, don't go away yet, people. Not just for the ad reads, but uh, we have more picks after those as well. Uh, I'm going to talk about Champs. Champs is hosting a free March Madness bracket contest for a chance to win $100. 1000 bucks. 100 bucks would, would be all right, but 1000 bucks even better. Plus, if you host your own March Madness pool on Champs, you get an extra entry fee. Entry, uh, extra free entry. That's better. I skipped the free part. Extra free entry into the bracket contest. Tiebreakers are determined by who enters first, so make sure to register now so you don't miss out. Head to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash champs. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash champs. And we are brought to you by Hall of Fame Bets. You can win bigger by betting smarter this NBA season with Hall of Fame Bets, the sports betting analytics platform for parlays, player processing game lines. Research every NBA and soccer bet with historical stats and data. Enter any parlay ID in the Hall of Fame Bets revolutionary parlay optimizer tool to get hit rates broken down by leg, as well as an expected probability for the entire parlay. Sort all players by hit rate for any bet to learn which players are hot and which picks have value. Stop betting in the dark and join over 30,000 users researching with Hall of Fame Bets to craft more intelligent, data-driven parlays. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit hofbets.com and use code SGPN to get 50% off your first month today. Start researching and start winning with Hall of Fame Bets. Okay, this is the part of the show where we do locks, dogs, parlays, and props. Not in that exact order. Uh, Gumby, I think it's your turn to kick things off this week. I'm going to take Zaleznikova. Uh, negative 200 is my lock. I, I told you I think she's a good prospect. Uh, I've got some issues uh, with her opponent. And I think Zaleznikova, man, I've been hurt by a lot of like uh, debuting women in the lock spot. But I'm ready to be hurt anyway. again. I'm ready to be hurt again. Let's, okay. Let's All right. What do I want? I'll try to get a nicer line here. I mean, they're all Maybe pretty not. nice. There's not really yeah. a bad line out there. No, there's really not. Um, Quarantillo, minus 130 against uh, Yusuf Zolal. You you know why if you uh, listen to this episode. So there you go. Uh, I'm going to take Pahuelo as my dog here. Okay. Uh, I think Pahuelo, I, I like, again, I like the pressure. I like the overwhelm here uh, against Padilla. Tafa, Batman Tafa would be my underdog pick um, against Carl Williams because Carl Williams isn't good. <laughs> I'm gonna take uh, I'm gonna take Justin Taffa via KO as yep. my prop, um, because while I already like the money line, it what did you say 160? I'm seeing the knockout prop at 210. Uh, it's not a 250. How would you like that instead? Ooh, yeah, give me that one instead. All right, uh, I'll take that instead. Yeah, Taffa yeah. 250 KO. Um, yep. you, you're shopping. 40, in sorry, two, 240. 240. Okay, you're that's shopping. Still, in, still right. You're shopping in better places than me. I am. <laughs> I am. Uh, give me Shab. Bayesian via knockout. I was thinking about Tafas, but uh, I'll spread it out a bit. I'll have Tafas as my as my dog, but he's if he's going to win, he's going to win via knockout. So Gummy's pick is uh, is a fine pick. Uh, I think Shabazian's going to knock out AJ Dobson plus one fifty five for that. All right, so 
Zelznyakova and Quarantillo are our locks. Pachulo is not my dog, but it's Gumby's dog. And Tafa are our dogs. Tafa knockout, Shabazi knockout are our props. All right. Hunger Man Jong, Super Fan Parlay, two fight parlay, going to win us money, big money. Go ahead. So I'm going to get more finishes in here because, uh, you know, our props for finishes this week. I think this is a big finish card. I'm going to take uh, Zelezniakova again. I'm going to take her uh, inside the distance uh, because the difference between her KO prop and her sub prop or her KO prop and her inside the distance prop is basically ne negligible, um, mostly because she hasn't gotten very many submissions. So I'd rather, you know, in case she decides to sneak a rear naked choke in here or something when somebody gets mm -hmm. tired uh there's no i think i saw the difference one was 230 one was like 245 or something like that like i so i might as well take the 230 on her inside the distance instead so i'm gonna take the 230 on Zlesnikova inside the distance i'm gonna pair it with kurt holabaugh by ko um kurt holabaugh has been put in in the work standing up i think he overwhelms trey ogden here with the the work on the feet plus 450 on him by the KO. So if you get him 450, you get Zelesnikova inside the distance plus 230. Put them together, you're going to get plus 1715. 1715, that's a nice one. All right. There. Now now you've heard everything you need to know. Um Anthony Smith's glue factory is closing for the day. You have to leave. It's closing time. You can't hang around. Um you we'll, we'll uh, our after hours club is the Discord. So make sure you go there to the speakeasy discord sports gambling slash discord. We shall be in there. Uh, Twitter Gumby runs our account there for us. Uh, SGPN MMA. He's at Gumby Freeland. I'm a Jeff Fox writer. Um, same thing on Instagram, get in my sub stack, get on my MMA writing there, enter my pick em contests, all that good stuff. Money MMA to sub .com. I need a drink. So I'll let Gumby tell you all about his other podcast, top turtle. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, we're interviewing Lupita Godinez and Angel Pacheco this week, as well as talking about some of these fights that you just heard me talk gratuitously about. Yep. And uh, our website, of course, sportsgamblypodcast.com, sportsgamblypodcast.com slash store madness. I'm pretty sure the code should still be working for you uh, whenever you hear and see this. And sportsgamblypodcast.com slash Patreon. We'll be back on Sunday to count our money. We're actually going to take a couple of days off now. Sorry. I know you people want us every day. Um, maybe someday we'll we'll get to that point. But uh, as of now, we, we need to rest. All right, Gumby, go ahead. All right. I'm Danny Gibby-Reeland. He's Thug Jeff Fox. And we <laughs> will see you on Sunday.